All right, all right, all right. We are back. We're back. Episode, what is this? 20, Six. 26. 26. 26. And this is a bit of a unique episode in that it is our second time having a guest return. I guess Kelly was our second time, but that was kind of a bonus episode. Right. Um, this one, we went a bit more in depth with Kayla Johnson. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the episode coming up, but a little bit of an update of the last week uh, in our lives. It's a festive week. Yep, it is uh, that time of the year. It's Easter Sunday for those who celebrate it and Passover for those who celebrate it, including uh, yourself and myself. Yeah, do you, I should know this, but do you, like, do you say happy Passover? Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it's most like a, Jewish holidays are pretty yeah. solemn. Uh, yeah, you said, you said something funny last night at Seder. Uh, about Jewish holidays. Can you repeat that for our audience? Yes. Uh, and, you know, this is um, this is what I've heard about. All Jewish holidays are kind of the same. That is that there were many of them. There were a few of us, referring to the Jews. They wanted to get rid of us. We fought them. We won. Let's eat. Let's go. That's, let's eat and let's drink. There's definitely a lot of... yeah. Uh, raising of wine glasses yeah. throughout the the ceremony. Yeah, but, you know, happy Passover. You know, Passover is a holiday where you celebrate the exodus of the Jews from Egypt, from slavery. Yeah. But it's still kind of an intense, you know, to, yeah. to emerge out of slavery, they inflicted, God inflicted these 10 plagues yeah. on on the Egyptians. That's not, you know, it's not a, like a fun, pleasant thing. Yeah, you're eating what? Maror, you're eating... Yeah, the uh, bread, parsley bread. dipped in salt water. You're right. eating hard boiled egg. Some people like hard boiled egg. What else is that? You're eating a lamb shank. Lamb shank. Uh, horseradish. Horseradish. To that represents the bitterness of slavery. Yeah. If you're eating something, yeah, yeah that's that, not symbolizing something very positive. Right. Um, but, but it's a fun. It's a fun. Um, it's a fun holiday. We uh, seder is fun. You have family gets fun. together. It's, and yeah. It's, it's kind of a ritualistic type of thing. We've done it every year. You've done it every year since you've been a baby. Yeah. Last night. Well, I, I will say though, you gave me a, a very, uh, your invitation was seemed a bit half-hearted, you know, you were like, Oh, you know, the older people are having a Seder tonight if you want to come. And I, I told, I told the, the family that before you got there and they're like, wow, like Michael really underselling the Seder. And I'm over here like, if there's a Seder, I'm there. Yeah. You know, you know what? I, I, uh, I misread. I'll, I'll fall on the sword here. I misread. I, I just assumed that with everyone being over 55 and that's being generous um, and you being the only young in there, you probably wouldn't be terribly excited, even though it's a Seder and, and festive. It wasn't like, you know, your tar target audience being there. Yeah, yeah but it's family. Yeah, and no, that's cool. I, I look, I really appreciated you being there. I thought it was great. I, yeah. I thought it was great. No, I, I had a good time. And I think, you know, having my bar mitzvah at 13 after that, you know, there's only so many Jewish holidays to celebrate. And I'm very proud of my Jewish tradition. And so when those holidays do come, you know, yes, every once in a while, we do miss them. But if I'm there to celebrate it or to, to be a part of it, I think that is a very important part of who I am. And so I do want to, um, you know, be there for those moments and remember our history. You right. Know? Talking about history. Um, my father who is now gone, he's been gone for a while, but he, he was a very quiet man. He yeah. was not a man of many words. He was quiet. Um, but one time a year, he kind of came out of his his shell, which was Passover. He would run the Seder. Seder yeah. is sort of a dinner where you read a story and you tell the story of the Jews' exodus from Egypt, and it's a, it's a story. And he would, you know, conduct, oversee, uh, MC the Seder, and yeah. he was very gregarious and very talkative. And uh, it it was you know as a as a kid and then young adult and an adult, I really reveled in Passover just to see my dad. In a, in a remarkably different kind of personality than the other 364 days a year. Yeah. Uh, remarkable transition. I still have very fond memories of, of those. Yeah. That's as much as anything else, as much as the Jewish holiday part of it, 
that aspect of it is really important to me. Yeah, no, I agree. And, so. and it's, it's important to me too. And I'm glad that we were able to all be together yesterday. Yeah. Speaking of important and crazy, I'm not sure we were talking about important and crazy, nice but segue. Um, your, your roots team had a crazy game Wednesday night, a couple yeah. of days ago. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, another tough game, but also another game. I think this one specifically, it really showed the character that we have in the group. Uh, going down a goal and then going down a man coming back once and then giving up a goal in the 89th minute, you think, Oh shit, we're done. And then we score in what the 93rd minute. And, you know, I want to give a special shout out to one of our guests on the show, Emra, yeah, my, my right. roomie on the road comes in late in the game and he delivers an unbelievable ball uh, to Otar for the game time goal sidesteps a defender and, his cross is kind of like a shot. It's a rocket, but it has bend on it. That's exactly the cross that you need from that spot. And it was right on the money game tying goal. We get a point at home. Obviously we're still looking for three points. And, but again, I think that really showed the character and the fight that we have in this team. Yep. Also moments where we showed our quality once again. Yep. And tomorrow we're recording this on Friday. Tomorrow we have another opportunity at home to get three points. And I feel very confident about that game. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that most recent game, the two, two tie, there were two times in that game where I was a hundred percent sure you had lost it. Where's uh, the faith? I, I have oh. faith, but when you're, you're playing the Western conference leader, you're down a man, it's late in the goal, late in the game. They've got 11 guys. You've got 10. You're struggling to touch the ball, never mind to take it down the field and score. So, yeah, it's really hard to come back from a, lead, from a deficit. You came back twice in the last five minutes of the game. The, yeah. the game time goal was scored in the last 15 seconds. Oh, I know. It's, it's crazy. It's heroics. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, again, that just shows the type of group that we have. So let me ask you this question. You're the soccer guy. Uh, a tie. Soccer games can end in a tie. It's very unusual. Oh One of the gosh. few sports that can end in a tie. Uh, there are ties that feel like losses because you control the game and you felt like, hey, we should have won that game. There are ties that feel like wins, I suppose, because it feels like, hey, that, that was a good result under the circumstance. And then there are ties that feel like ties that, you know, how did that tie feel to you? I mean, I think it felt like a tie. I think well, that's not very exciting. Well, no, I think given the group that we have, every game that we play, we expect to win. Yeah. And so. And that's, that's against any opponent. Yes, San Diego is a good team, but we're a good team and we want to compare ourselves to the best. And so anytime that you play an opponent, we hope to win and we expect to win. And so, yes, going down a man and being down a goal, that's tough. And yes, it was great to get a point, but still we look at that game and we're at home and we have a strong team. We expect to win that yeah. game. So, yeah you know, late game heroics ended in a tie and, you know, we're glad to get a tie, but also we dropped two points. So, yep. you know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a tricky one. Obviously we want to win and obviously it's good that we didn't lose, but we're still looking for a win Yeah, and we're hoping to get that one tomorrow. Um, let's, uh, let's not drag this out too long, but the most important part of our intro is our guest Kayla Johnson and you may have heard about Kayla from listening to the podcast in the past. Kayla was on episode six. Uh, at that time, she was a digital producer at ESPN. Um, it's a little over a year now yep. since we talked with her and she's no longer at ESPN. She now is the director of Together. development, director, director, director of, of development, development. Yep. Uh, at Together, which is a really awesome brand founded by women and leading the way in creating and producing content surrounding amazing stories and amazing people, um, well, amazing women, really. They're yep. producing content that are highlighting women and some of the amazing things that they are doing. She recently was the director of a film, I Am Jalea, which is going to be screening shortly at the Atlanta Film Festival. So we talk about um, her experience, one, leaving ESPN and moving from a giant company to a startup and kind of the different dynamics of that. Right. She went from ESPN together, has 11 total, I think, employees. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's interesting. She said, you know, she 
has more resources actually at this company in this new role? Yeah, that was a question you asked her about going from big to small and resources. And yeah. her answer was was surprising. Yeah. And, and her description of what she meant by that was was insightful. Yeah. And so we talk about that. We talk about her experience being a first time director and making this film come to life. We talk about the, the kind of landscape of content and especially uh, content surrounding women and, and how that has grown in the past few years. Uh, we talk about what to look forward to it together and some more project that she's working on. Really just an amazing conversation. Kayla is someone who we love talking to so much in season one that we just wanted to check back in and see what has been going on and have another excuse to to hang out and talk because she's like we said she's part of the family and you know what's interesting i listened to the uh, kayla johnson episode which was march of 2021 and i think you said in introducing her that you're going to enjoy listening to her and she's someone i bet who are going to revisit yeah. and um and we revisited her it's it's exciting to follow um her career development right that's what happens when you have a repeat guest is yeah. that you're you're kind of following up on the career development of Kayla Johnson. And um, it's kind of cool because her, her career is definitely developing and yeah. evolving. It's yeah. exciting. And I mean, it's, it's no surprise uh, given who she is and the work that she's put out. It's no surprise to see her continuing to put out amazing content and sharing really important stories. And if anyone is out there looking for content, I urge you to go to together and check out some of the awesome content that they're producing. She's telling the stories that have traditionally not been told. Yeah. And, and, and it's important. important. Yeah. yeah. So let's let you hear from Kayla herself. Enough of us. There's a little bit of us in the episode, but, but mostly Kayla. And what is this episode 26? 26. 26 with Kayla Johnson, Marathon Minute. Let's go. What do you think of the orange shirt? Is it orange? Yeah. Coral. Coral. Orange. Looks good. I think it's a good color on me. I agree. YouTube audience, what do you think? Just let us know. Brought to you by. Oh, thank you. Brought to you by Cafe Fanny Granola. It's just, it's the best. Yeah. It's simply the best. By the way, right downstairs, we're upstairs in the house, downstairs. Two boxes of uh, Cafe Fanny waiting for me. And don't you dare. <sighs> you know what? Don't you dare leave this house with those. I'm cafe feeling a little hungry. I might go downstairs and have a bowl. No, help yourself. Just don't take the box. Yeah, no guarantees. Okay. Take a bowl. Don't take the box. That's for me. That sounded nice. All right. Episode 26 coming to you live. Actually, not, not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. But wait, there's more. That's what they say on TV. But wait, there's more. We recorded that intro on a Friday. Today is Easter Sunday. So if you're listening to this next week, happy Easter to those that celebrate. Uh, we mentioned Passover, happy Passover to those that celebrate. But we had a game last night that we wanted to update you guys on. And we just couldn't get enough of each other. We wanted to hop back on and talk some more. We can't get enough of each other? Well, okay. Well, but talking about celebration... Right, Easter, Easter Passover, Passover, and there's um, something to celebrate uh, in the uh, in the Roots family. Yeah, um, last we got, night we got the monkey off the back, first win of the season. Right, first uh, three points. Loud and United. Yeah, uh, came in from uh, the East Coast, from what Washington D.C. Yep, and uh, you had a home game last night against them. And uh, like you said, you got your first uh, W, first three points. I thought you guys controlled that game from the outset. You guys look really strong out there. Yeah. You know, anytime that you go up 4-0 or you put four goals in, you expect to win that game. And I think we managed it really well. Yeah, on, on a more personal note, uh, happy to make my season debut, league season debut. Also, <laughs> being the competitor that I am, I was pretty pissed that we gave up a goal when I was in. As a defender, you want to keep a shutout. And so coming in, you want to see that shutout out. And so as much as I was hyped after the game, part of me was like, God damn, gave up a shutout. But, you know, I think it's important to as much as I reflect on that and want to not give up a shutout next time, you know, let's celebrate the three points. A win's a win. And let's let's look at the positives here yeah that's a good attitude to have to be pissed uh that you gave up a goal in a 4-1 not you but the team gave up a goal while you were in i think when you're up four nothing uh late in the game two things happen 
Number one, I think there's just a natural reaction to kind of let up a little bit and everyone's sort of, you know, relaxed, uh, who's up on, you know, who's up for nothing. You're relaxed and you're probably moving forward, wanting to score another goal. Uh, you take some unnecessary chances. And then the other team has nothing to lose. So they're just throwing everything at you. It's, yeah. it's sort of, uh, you know, not, not shocking to give up a goal when you're up for nothing. Yeah. But still um, disappointed, disappointed, but glad to make my season de debut, hopefully for so many and some cool moments for me. We talked about it on the podcast we just recorded, which will be coming out shortly. Another amazing episode, honestly, might be my favorite conversation yet. Really a great one, but we talked about how during this game, uh, I got to engage a lot with some of yeah. uh, the fans, a lot of which are young kids from East Bay, from Oakland. And it, it was just really cool. And I'm kind of coming to this point where uh, I get to recognize that I can have an impact on some of these kids. And so I talked about how during warmups, these kids were like yelling, like, where do you get your cleats? Like, can I have your jersey? Can I have your socks? Like, like same thing that I would have been doing when I was a kid. That's exactly right. And, you know, I looked over at them. I was like, you guys want to know something cool. Like I actually grew up in Oakland too. And they're like, what? And I'm like, I played for Bay Oaks. I'm like what? So like, that was just a, a very cool moment for me. And then uh, we talked about uh, post game. I saw a kid who was wearing a Jersey with my name and number on the back. And it's not like this was a family member or anything. And I'm, I, I I've only given my Jersey to, to family members and really close friends. And so to see a kid wearing my jersey i was like where'd you get my jersey right. and because like you can't get it at the team store and uh they said they customized it online and that they went to saint paul's my middle school and so like that that was just a very uh cool moment for me puts things into perspective of kind of the the impact that you can have in the position that you're in or that i'm in and uh moments like that make uh make you appreciate what you're doing and so that was really cool i know dad you were there too i was there we got a, a picture of you and he yeah uh i think that's a very postable picture uh we should post that but uh you know you have to realize max as a pro athlete that you know when you're on that uh, rectangle they call a soccer field um there's you know hundreds if not thousands of people looking at you right and mm -hmm. And many of those are people who admire you or want to be you or are just fascinated by that guy went to the same middle school as me or yeah. that guy grew, grew up in Oakland. Uh, that's going through a lot of people's minds as you're concentrating on, you know, winning a winning a soccer match. Yeah. So that, that was a really cool moment. And we wanted to hop on and kind of talk about, yeah, cool you know, first win and some of the cool moments that came with that. Another cool thing to add before we get to the episode is uh, one of our guests, friend of the show, Jeremy Bobasi, just bagged another two goals for the earthquakes yesterday. I think it's cool to give an update of not just on social media, but you know, we can talk about what our guests are doing out in the world because our guests are doing some amazing things. So just a special highlight because uh, I went to dinner with Jeremy uh, two nights ago, and then the next morning they had a game at 12 30 in the afternoon a weird kickoff time but he scores two goals i think he's tied for leading the mls in goals right now so big shout out to to our guest and friend of the show jeremy abobasi i texted him saying it must have been the pasta hey because pizza Aola, shout out pizza Aola if they want to give us a you know a sponsorship uh, we know we athletes are superstitious so uh the earthquakes you know they tied that game 2-2 jeremy scored both goals for the earthquakes but athletes being superstitious he may ask you to have dinner with him every thursday night before games and you eat know, at the same place because uh it worked if we secure a sponsorship i'm down but you know if not i'm i'm sure You're with tough. with gas with gas prices i don't think he's going to be wanting to drive from san jose to oakland that often and you know the meal was not super cheap so let's let's work out a sponsorship with pizzaola and you know maybe we'll make that happen but i'm not opposed to that yeah me neither Special shout out to Jeremy and just special shout out to all of our other marathon minute guests that are out there killing it. I, I think Erica Wheeler just won another trophy uh, playing Euro basket. She did. She, was, she won uh, MVP of her league. MVP of the league. Yep. Shout out Erica Wheeler. Some amazing people doing amazing things. Uh, maybe we'll start to give 
a bit more updates in our intros about our guests. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I have a theory, by the way. What's the theory? The theory is that coming on as a guest to Mar uh, Marathon Minute kind of boosts people's confidence. Mm -hmm. I think Jeremy, you know, because he was so flattered to be on our podcast, sort of has a little bit more confidence in his soccer game. Erica, others, I think, I think there's be a definitely factor. a relationship between Could be a being factor. on the pod and, and, and performance. Could be a factor for sure. Yeah. Uh, we factor. talked, we talked with Jeremy about uh, potentially coming back on the show. So look out for potentially, you know, a recap with Jeremy coming up, but enough of us, let, let's get to the episode for real this time. This is episode 26 with Kayla Johnson, another one that you will love. So great guess. Yeah. En enough of us. Let's get to episode 26 marathon minute. Let's go. Johnson, what if I've ever up? seen her before. Hi, Hi, Kayla. Hey. Hi, Mr. Mike. How are you? Mr. Mike, I like that. That's <laughs> good. That's good. That's I'm a from the South, so we have to put a Mr. in front of Mr. and Mrs. in front of anybody. Yeah. No, that's okay. It's 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 not as formal as Sir or Mr. Orange still. And Mr. it's not yeah. as casual as Mike or Michael. I like it. It's a good. It's Remind. a good halfway point. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, thank it's you. It's nice in between. Thanks for your patience, Kayla. I apologize I'm running a little behind from practice, but fine. but we made it. We made it. We're here. Oh, you want to see something? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Let's go. I was okay. like, am I corny for wearing the merch? But this this shirt no, is so comfortable. That's not corny at all. That's that's surreal. I went, I told Maddie that I wear this shirt like two, three days in a row because it's so why are you telling Maddie that and not telling us? You know? <laughs> I know Maddie's I probably know. like, uh, I don't care. For I'm over here, like, oh my god. Yes. <laughs> and for our listeners, Kayla is um is featuring today in her wardrobe the uh black gray kind of gray black vintage black vintage black vintage black marathon minute yeah. logo t-shirt which yeah it that looks that i have one of those but it doesn't look quite that good on me uh, uh you wear it well as they say thank you thank you thank you oh, it's good it's good with the whole and it actually matches the wall of your yeah. room it, I think. Uh, it like matches the ambiance and like everything that's going on right now so it's a it's a great aesthetic you didn't um, paint the wall to match the t-shirt did you no, I didn't. That would I didn't be really weird. To, but now we just have to go with the the theme. Yeah, yeah. you're looking good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, let me uh, let me start out first of all just um, by saying thank you for giving us your time again. Uh, okay. This is this is pretty unique. This is our second time having someone on again. I hope I hope you know that wow. you're uh, you're setting a trend. Special. You're special because you are. <laughs> I'm, I'll be honest, we've had some unbelievable conversations throughout our Marathon Minute experience, but I will say our conversation uh, last time was honestly one of my favorite conversations, and I really enjoyed talking to you, getting to know you, and even though we haven't met in person, which is kind of wild, it's I do weird. feel like I feel like we know each other like pretty well at this point, so it's, it's cool, like one of the, one of the cool things that I enjoy about consuming podcasts is when guests kind of come on and like, you feel like it's not like you don't just get one episode with this person, but you get to kind of see how they evolve and see like what's new with them. And we hope to kind of do similar things here. And so, you know, we want to do that with you and you're someone who since the last time we talked, how long ago was that? Probably a year. Was that I know. A year ago? I know. Okay. Dad. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it was March 8th, 2021. Kayla was our guest on episode six of season one. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. And you guys are on season two or season season two, season two episode 26. So we're, now we're 20 episodes later, a year later. Wow. And yeah. look at us, man. This is crazy. <laughs> that look was a year us. ago. That's crazy. That actually is crazy. It felt like forever ago that we did that, but then to think that it was a year is like that seems what? like yeah, that yeah, seems too long. Weird. But hey, 
here we are and a lot has happened in the last year for yeah. for all of us but we're here to to talk about you and to to check in with what's what's good with you now what's been going on in the last year what we can look forward to last time we spoke with you uh, uh, you're a producer at ESPN. Since yep. then, you've moved on to a new company. Are you doing a new role within that new company? Okay, yeah. so that's exciting. So let's just let's start off with once you left ESPN, what was your mindset and what kind of what were you looking for in your next opportunity? Yeah, I think um, sometimes when you're at a certain place in your career, you kind of feel like you've capped out um and just like even though you're good at a certain thing it kind of becomes mundane and you're not really challenged and so it just like gets boring you know and so yeah. with can, this, can i stop you there kayla yeah, yeah, because yeah. that was fast that no was i'm fast. so i'm sorry but but max and i having spent uh you know a, an hour and a half with you a year ago we're very familiar with what you were doing for ESPN a year right. ago, which was you were produ you were a producer, a yep. digital producer, uh, making original content for ESPN, creating, yeah. editing, uh, yeah. and then you know getting it on the uh, on the broadcast. Yeah. Um, and so that you know that that may be a segue to uh, you know what you were doing for ESPN and a segue into what you're currently doing. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, what I was doing at ESPN definitely helped, helped me in my new role. Um, and, but like I said, like when you're in a certain role and kind of doing like the same type of content, same type of things, it can kind of just like get redundant and stale and just like, you want to be challenged. And yeah. so um, with this new role that I have, um, I work at Together, um, founded by yeah. Sue Bird, Chloe Kim, Alex Morgan, and Simone Manuel for incredible athletes, um, all Olympians and- All women. Um, obviously, say it again. All women, right? All women, all women. Nope. Um, and so when I heard about Together, I was you know, very, very new to the platform, just like anybody else. I think they had just launched two months before I got my role. Um, and so like, looking at more of a startup company rather than you know a, a huge conglomerate like ESPN that's one a huge challenge in itself because it's like I've operated in this you know well-oiled machine right. I've never worked at a startup before so that's like a totally different world for me yeah. um and so brought being brought on as director of development which um essentially okay. means that I'm coming up with all of our original content that lives on our platforms. And also um, we sell that to um, streamers or maybe a co a, do a co-produced piece or something like that. Um, so yeah, just like what I was learning at ESPN helped me a lot in this new role, but it's just like at a bigger scale and right. I guess more stakes because yeah. it is a smaller company. Can, can you help me out here again, Kayla? Uh, yeah. Can you describe uh, what Together is such that someone who was born in the 50s, for <laughs> example, no one necessarily in this room, but maybe our listeners, someone born in the 1950s would understand what Together is? Yeah, so Together is a brand um, that focuses really on telling uh, stories of incredible women, whether it's in sport, entertainment, business, whatever that lane is, we just want to be there and tell it. And I think in mainstream media, everyone can kind of tell that there is a gap when it comes to telling those stories. And instead of just like waiting around for somebody else to do it, those four incredible women that I just named were like, let's do it ourselves. And so they yeah. built this company from the ground up. And when I tell you we have a small but mighty team, there's like, I think 11 people full time, but the things that yeah. we've been able to produce and the stories that we've been able to tell is like, blows my mind because there's like one person doing 10 jobs. Yeah. So it's really, really cool to be a part of something really new. And I think, um, you know, 10 years from now, looking back, it's, it's something that's definitely going to impact the culture for sure. So, yeah, no, I, I can see it already. I remember, I remember I saw the announcement of together before 
before that you joined them and i i saw it and i was like oh wow this is a cool concept and then yeah. when i saw that you were joining it it aligned perfectly like i i just started thinking about how you would fit so well into that dynamic kind of going back a little bit talking about the difference of a giant like espn and then a startup how is that transition for you um coming from an organization where you had unbelievable resources, but also you had to, I'm sure to do anything, you had to go through three, four, five people to get something approved. I know you went on your own and went rogue and kind of just did stuff, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why you were able to be successful. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about just the different dynamic of going from a, a mega production company like ESPN to a startup and essentially like you said, you have a team of 11 full-time people and how do you navigate that um, from where you came from? Well, you know, what's interesting. I actually, this is going to sound crazy, but I actually have more resources at my, my new job than my old one. And it's okay. because, you know, you want to know why it's because people that really believe in your vision and your idea will put resources behind it. And that's, yeah. I think, is the huge difference. Like I was coming from a place where to be frank, like, I didn't think I really had that support. Like people are like, yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds fun. Go do it. But I had to like, literally from start to finish, like I said, do everything. I yeah. really had no help. Barely, barely had help Went on a shoot one time, had to bring my personal camera. Like it was a it was lot, like but yeah. now I'm in this position. I'll pitch a story. Obviously we bounce um, ideas off each other. But, you know, at the base of who we are, we all want to tell, um, you know, these phenomenal stories. And so when I present it, it's like, okay, obviously work within our budget, but here's a certain amount of money, go make this thing great. And that like, to be able to hire people that are really good in those like DP positions, the editing yeah positions like I wouldn't say that I was an expert shooter or an expert editor mm -hmm. but I had vision and I'm, I'm a great storyteller so yeah. I want to focus on that and then you know let the cooks in the kitchen focus on what they're really good at you know so that we can yeah. come together and make this like dope content so yeah. actually it's been a nice adjustment because what I'm doing stories that I really really love and care about yeah. The characters are phenomenal but then on top of that i'm like actually getting money to make it look super super dope and like have my vision come to life so I'm, it's it's super fun yeah now in in trying to figure out kayla which is part of your job what in your words not mine necessarily but super dope content <laughs> uh you know you can broadcast what are you what are you looking for uh and and do you do you concentrate on you know uh, a certain type of of a woman whether it's an athlete or a performer or is it much broader than that um for me and i actually think like another like foundation of the company is to find women that are multi-hyphenates, like women across the board can do so many great things. So when I'm looking at a story, I don't want to look at just one dimension. I want to look at like what your family life is like, what other interests that you have, um, what are your other passions beyond just if they play a sport, just beyond that, you know? Yeah. And so not just looking at okay, they did this one great thing, but that's it. It's like this person did this great thing, but also look at the other amazing aspects of her life that we can tell. And so, and then on top of that, being a great character on camera doesn't hurt. So yeah, um, that's really what I look for when I, when I search out talent. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it was Madison who might've said this, but I think when she talked about some of her WNBA players, she talked about how they, they kind of have to be entrepreneurial and multi-hyphenate, yeah. as you say, um, by nature, just because they, you know, they don't come out of high school or come out of college one year and make millions of dollars. They have to do more things to, to have a livelihood. You know, they have to go through four years of college. And then most of the time they have to go overseas or they have to find brand deals. They have to 
they have to do all these other things to, yeah. to supplement what a male is able to do just with one thing. So I think that makes for better stories because these women are doing not, they're not just balling on the court or on the field or whatever they're doing that. And then four or five other things that are incredible. And so I feel like it gives you the opportunity to tell some much more complex stories and with some amazing people kind of along that, where do you, where do you see kind of the, the landscape of content and storytelling around women right now? I feel like, I don't know if like, it's just because there's more media and more content now than ever or what, but I feel like obviously there's still a lot that needs to improve in terms of equity, but yeah, I feel like compared to five, 10 years ago, it's changing. Like, do you, do you feel that from the inside or are you still looking at how much work needs to be done to create more equity? And you're at a, you're at a company that's focusing on women centric content. So what do you feel about kind of the space as it currently is? Yeah. I, I, you know what? I definitely think that people are, are catching on. Like, let me just say this, like we've been it, you know what I'm saying? Like we there's, there's been so many stories that have gone untold that need to be told. And like women have been amazing. But yes. I think we're in a time now where people are like, oh, wow, women are amazing. <laughs> and so they're yeah. catching on, which is great, you know, better late than never. But definitely think that there's always like room for growth and room for right. improvement. But it is just really cool to be on the forefront and be at a place where we're kind of like leading those conversations and putting people on essentially. So yeah, um, I definitely think there's a lot more room for growth. Cause you just like on the internet, you see so much ignorance and foolishness. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just a mess. But like, yeah. I think those are the, are the people who are going to kind of get left behind and exactly. the people who know, no, you know? So Um, I definitely think it's, it's definitely improved, but I can't wait till people like really understand, oh, this is, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Yeah. But I think uh, to your point and to Max's point, I think, I think if you looked at sort of a graph, right. On, on how women and women's sports and women entertainers were kind of perceived and the, um, you know, the content and how they're, they're, they're focused on. If you looked at a graph, you could see that graph is moving. I think fairly, you can't, if you can, you can't see this on radio, but I'm, I'm showing well, I mean, a slope that's going upward at, at, yeah. at accelerated pace. I think you're at, the, I think short point is, I think you're in the right place at the right time. I think you're really well situated for where the marketplace is heading. Yeah, absolutely. What do I know? I don't know. No, no. no I could be you're so wrong. right. I thought Max was going to say something, but yeah, no, you're so right because, like, that's what I wanted you to say. That's all I want. I am so right. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, no, Kayla, you can leave it right there. Oh my God. People, people, people don't recognize it though. Like, people really don't realize how incredible these stories are, and just because it doesn't like make, make a certain amount of money the first time around. I think people just like are easy to give up on it, but to be a part of something that's like, we're going to continue to tell these stories and put it on social media, put it on streaming platforms so people can really see what they're missing. It's cool when people recognize that they were missing that, you know? So yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. you're right. I mean- <laughs> thank you Kayla and uh, but but you know with with your sister my daughter being in, and your friend being involved our daughter my, I'm talking about Madison yeah. uh, who has worked in the sphere of women's sports for the last six seven years almost exclusively we've had a bird's eye view based on what she's doing right yeah. on how the progression in, at least in, in the women's sports arena has changed even over that relatively short period of time it's six seven years is kind of a, a blink yeah uh, but it's moving fast, I think. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because we have we have a unique perspective, being that obviously my sister, your daughter, is working so close to to all of this that we we get to see it from a different perspective, and we feel a little bit more connected to that. But I do think you're right in that the rest of the world is also catching up. I still, obviously, 
there's going to be ignorance. Like I still have to like check my teammates every once in a while. Well, they'll like say some stupid shit about the WNBA. I'm like, okay, she would wax your ass. Like I guarantee it. Like, right. But did you I even played, the finals? Did you see yeah. the finals? Yeah. Like I, I played beer pong against Chelsea gray and <laughs> I like, <laughs> like I, it is embarrassing how badly I lost embarrassing Chelsea. That was, that was brutal. Athletic in every way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I mean, yeah, even you look at uh, you look at NIL, I think four of the five top paid college athletes were women. And so I think some of these companies, some of the, the people who control the money, which a lot of times money is what controls everything are starting to see like, if you invest in women, and that's the thing, it's investing in it. It's not yeah. just like, it's like when you put when you put them on. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, a few years ago with the NCAA tournament, it's like, yeah, if you're going to put them in a gym with no advertisements and, and no stands and make it look like ass, like, yeah, it's going to be an ass product. If you put a men's game in that gym too, it's going to be an ass product. But Hello. if you invest in it and make it look the same, like there's ballers all and, over it, both genders, right. you know? So like, it's just a matter of investing, I think finally that's starting to be known but it's still like we said it still has a long way to go you talked about putting people on and telling stories and one of the stories that you are responsible for is the I am Jalea story and that's something that we want to we want to give you your flowers for that's something that was in the what was it the Atlanta Film Festival right mm -hmm. yeah it, and, we got uh, selected for the Atlanta Film Festival. Yeah, you got selected for the Atlanta Film Festival. So we want to, you know, yeah, give you your flowers for that. That's that's a huge accomplishment. You were the director of that. Am I am I right? Director of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you that's just talk so a little weird. bit about? Hey, hey, that's <laughs> that's like. I've never had dope. anything in any film festival. I want to <laughs> put that out there right Not now. Yet. Not, Not yet. yet. It's Not first yet. one. Hopefully, yeah. first it, of many. It's but. your first one. Very first. This is well, my first director job like okay so we, so we we have we can talk uh you know a few different ways about this what was it like to be a director what what like how did this story come about can you just kind of walk us through kind of all around how this came to be and your involvement with it yeah so this is my very first project coming on to together um i will say this was actually in the works before I even got there. So Jess, who's our CCO, um, also an incredible storyteller, um, wanted to do this series. But like I said, when I came on, there was like eight or nine full-time people. So yeah. trying to get this done while also running a company and like doing a million things at once um, was really hard. So I came on, obviously, director of development. I hear, hey, we're trying to do this project. And I'm like, I got it. So from there, I just kind of became lead. Um, and also with the resources that we had, we had invested, like you said, invested a lot into this project. And um, instead of just like outsourcing a director, I was like, you know what? Like, I, I think I can do this. Like, I'm going to be on the ground. I'm just going to oh. take this into my own hands. Not only is it saving money, but it's giving me opportunity to like, yeah, yeah. You know, be a filmmaker. So um, I obviously had like experience doing, uh, leading my own shoots um, at my previous employer, but this was like a whole nother ball game because it's a mini docu-series yeah. and I didn't want to take that lightly. So um, yeah, we just started meeting with the family, building relationships with them. And after the first shoot it was like nonstop. So just like, going through her schedule, seeing what she had, um, and then getting to know like her family, what the storylines were there. Obviously the big story was that she, she had made this super viral dance and it was somewhat stolen from her. And so it's like, yeah, can I just jump in real quick? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, can you just maybe give a little bit of context of what oh. the, uh, what this, the uh it's a film yeah what the film is for someone yeah. who might not have seen it 
Yeah, so Jalea Harmon is a young 16 year old girl from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, she created probably one, arguably the most um, viral TikTok dances um, yeah. called the Renegade. And I think it, I think she created it in 2019, but um, it was popularized by Charlie D'Amelio. D'Amelio. I'm like, who are these kids? Um, Charlie D'Amelio. Yeah, I just got on Addison TikTok. Ray. <laughs> Addison Ray, um, who are two white TikTokers and they're, you know, they did the dance, it blew up. And instead of kind of giving her credit for it, they just kind of ran with it. Um, and so they got a lot of brand deals, a lot of partnerships. You'll see that in the in the film, just like how much they benefited off of this dance. And it was sad because Jalea, who actually is trying to break into um, being a choreographer and a dancer and all of that and into that world, um, she kind of got left behind. So. They were uh, both invited, Charlie and Addison were invited to the NBA All-Star game in Chicago. I think this was in 2020 and people caught wind that Jalea um, actually was the one who originated this dance. And so after they found that out, they flew her out there um, and people were like, oh, okay, so she's the originator of this dance. But even then, I think at that point it had blown up so much, yeah. even to this day, people yeah. still think that Charlie and Addison are the ones that created, or at least Charlie did. Yeah. So um, it was really important for us to take you behind the scenes of who this kid was and why she's important and why you should be paying attention to her as well. Not trying to yeah. steal the spotlight from anybody, but also right. at the same time, trying to raise her up to that level that she should be at well, put time. her in put her in the right spotlight right exactly. she deserves her own spotlight for exactly for the creator now the, the, it's a 38 minute film mm -hmm. and uh, I, I know that because i looked it up but um I, i'm just curious uh to make a 38 minute film how much how much uh film do you and i know there's no you know formula but but typically for a 38 minute film how much film do you shoot to cut it down, how much is you know, how much editing do you do? I guess is the answer is the question. Oh so, man, okay. So I have to before I get into this, I have to acknowledge two incredible people who like us? is it is it us? <laughs> Oh my god. Yes, y'all too. I was, I was um, not two other yeah, two I was other. not expecting this. Wow. I'm, blush, I'm blushing. Um, I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of like held my hand through this process and that's Ariel Hairston who when I tell you like I'm obsessed with Ariel because she is such a phenomenal storyteller she was our editor for this piece so God bless her going through all this footage that was shot and then um Azariah who was our director of photography he shot everything um really like made my vision come to life um just with the look of everything I wanted it because she is a teenager. She loves dance and the arts and stuff like that. I wanted to make it really whimsical and dreamy. And so I like sent him my mood board and everything. And it just like looked like a dream. And I was like, I don't know if you could do this. It's like easy. Yeah. First thing on set, I'm like looking at all the shots and I'm like, oh my God, I'm just obsessed with everything. Like just, he was incredible. So the question was like, how much do you shoot? Me and Azariah fight about this all the time because we overshoot everything. Like it's yeah. overwhelming. I'm for 38 minutes. I probably, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but we have a five terabyte drive and five That's terabytes big. is a ton of footage. Like yeah it's supposed to last you for maybe a year to fill up we filled almost two of those no that seems like wow. a lot of film it's That's impressive a lot anyway. of footage um and it's because and and this is something that i am still learning too like i yell at him all the time because we're actually currently in production on another project i'm like we have to train ourselves to be more selective and you just like, but when you're around these people, everything is good. So you yeah. want to catch everything, Yeah. but it's like training yourself to, to just remember that you don't need to get every little thing, you know, good moments are going to happen. We're going to capture those, but just to like be more decisive, but we both, we both struggle with it. So we had a ton yeah. 
a ton of stuff. And that's why I say God bless Ariel because she went through all of it. And we came out with this like incredible piece of art. So yeah, I was really, really happy about it. But that's it was awesome. We uh we may need to get in touch with Ariel because our our pods tend to run <laughs> a bit long and uh, I just I don't have the I don't have the the heart to take stuff out like I'll I'll like try and take out like thirty seconds and I'm like no nah, we need this like this is it's this a is podcast critical. though you it's can get away the, it. it's a little different a little yeah. different but it's like a child right it's, it's, it's these films or our podcasts these interviews are like our you know they're like part of us right they're yeah. our children you don't want to cut out you want to keep everything in but yeah your editor must have had a one heck of a job to get you know three months into 38 minutes yeah we filmed from i think the end of july till her birthday which was the end of August, but they celebrated it a couple of weeks after that in September. Wow. So yeah, July to September. Wow. The breaks in between that, but yeah. Did it did it day. did it come out the film, the end product, Kayla? Did it come out as you hoped it would? I mean, does it reflect your vision of what you wanted to create? Yeah, honestly, it, it really did come out better than what I expected. Like there was definitely a lot of like learning curves and, you know, speed bumps and all of that. Um, but for what it's worth, like, I don't even know if I should say this story, but I'm, I'll tell y'all. I'm not, I, I haven't told anyone, <laughs> but like, Let's go. it, it was really like a God thing because the stuff that we were able to come out with and, you know, the things that we went through, I was like, how did we even have an episode? But the, the last episode, the finale, actually, um, we found out something happened to Ariel's drive and wow. the, the stuff from the last shoot, like all the footage from the last shoot wasn't on her drive. Nothing. That's, that's like everything on that, everything in that footage was supposed to live as the final episode. So we're like, how are we gonna make an episode with no footage, right? Yeah. But thankfully we shot in Orlando where she was celebrating her birthday. And that same day, um, I was like, okay, Azariah, just like put the footage on my backup drive just in case anything happens, whatever. And then, and cause they both live in Atlanta. So um, he, dropped the footage on my drive and then, you know, went about his merry way. And so when she said that was like two days before we were supposed to really release the episode, we had nothing. And wow. so I was like, oh my God, I have this backup footage. I like, here you go. And I gave it to her. She cranked out an episode in probably less than 24 hours. And wow. when I tell you the last episode was my favorite, I was like, oh, she's a G. Because... <laughs> wow. It was just, yeah, it was crazy how that came together. But that is, I think, some divine intervention there, yeah. Kayla. Perhaps. It was really, that's what I'm saying. It was a God thing because I was like, how did we even do that? And she's like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, God's a lot. Well, good, good for you. Yeah. yeah. And congratulations on making the film festival. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Has, now I know it's a 2022 film. Has it, has it, has the festival gone on yet? I mean, has it taken place? No, I actually leave next week for it. So oh, unfortunately, go. because of COVID, um, most of the films are virtual screening. So, you know, if you want to watch it, um, our oh, screen yeah. on the 21st, you can like request a pass to watch it. But um, I'm going to go, I think there's like a creative conference and then some other workshops for filmmakers and stuff like that. So we're going to attend and, you know, just see what we can learn and how we can improve moving forward. But it actually starts next week. So I'm really excited. Yeah, about yeah let's go. Um, kind of going back to your directorial debut, does this, does this kind of motivate you to want to direct more films or long form content going forward or were you like oh shit like I'm definitely hiring an outside director next time like what how was how was the experience um and do you want to do more of that going forward do you think um 1000 percent, yes like even yeah. through all of like the headaches tears ups and downs like it was hard but 
I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. Like, I think it solidified everything that I had been feeling. Cause like I said, I've done like small things here and there. I've shot different pieces, but this is like my first kind of longish form um, yeah. piece. And I was like, oh yeah, like, I love this. So I'm currently directing my second one now. Um, we're in post-production. We have one more shoot. But this this project, like I loved telling Jalea's story. It was great. And I think that what we did was amazing. But being on this project currently that I'm on now, like it, I'm like, I just want to keep doing more of this and just like being able to build with my subjects and their families and stuff. I'm like, this is not even director talent relationship anymore. I just like, yeah. I feel like they're family now. So yeah. um, it's, re- it's, it's going to be a good one. I'm really yeah. excited. Is this something you can talk about or not yet? Yeah, I can tell you guys if you want to know. Well, you, uh, you've, te- I mean, you've yeah. teased us, like you've talked about this know, wonderful process. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah. teaser. <laughs> um, no, so this new docu series, um, it's actually season two of a series that was launched before I got it to together called Phenom. Um, so yeah, season two, and we are um, spotlighting a young lady by the name of Flage Johnson. She is an incredible hooper but also a rapper. She was a McDonald's All-American. She's actually right now in Chicago playing in the Jordan Brand Classic. She was um, the only girl selected for the Iverson Classic. Mm. Um, This year, actually for McDonald's All-American, she was the only from the girls and boys side, only player Mm. um, from Georgia selected on the team. And what I think is so cool about her is that she is like, like I was saying before, is such a multi hyphenate. Like she is great in basketball. She's equally great in music. Um, She also is a gamer. She's really into like NFTs and all of that stuff that I don't understand. Um, She's super smart, just the way that she thinks of business. She signed to Rock Nation for a distribution deal for her mixtape that's coming out. Um, Like, and her dad actually was a rapper um, in the early 2000s. Unfortunately, he was killed before she was born. by gun violence and so like even her story is just amazing to hear where she's come from I'm like and then on top of that she's just like so fun to be around like I love this child I love her I love her family her family's amazing so I'm just like so excited to tell their story and like introduce her to the world oh yeah yeah wow it's uh, uh, that was she sounds fascinating. Um, so w- were you at the McDonald's um, All American Game? Did you do any filming there? Now, by the way, Max and I have been. We've to, attended. In the we've past. attended that uh, through our my daughter Madison, which I love that event. That is a fantastic event to see all these up and comers. Yeah, uh, it's really a cool event to see the you know twenty four best men's and women's players who are all going to be you know playing at really high levels in a few years. It's really a fun event. Yeah, so we did film. Don't remind me because she did get mad at me. I actually oh, no. didn't get to go because I had a wedding that I committed to like months prior. And it was like a really close friend that was getting married. It was the exact same weekend as McDonald's All American. So we sent the crew up there. Um, shout out to our, our head of marketing at Together, Paula Hughes. She was up there holding it down for me. Um, but yeah, Flav was not really happy with me <laughs> when I couldn't go to that shoe. And she was like, I am playing the biggest game of my high school career and you're going to miss it. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. She's like, I hope the wedding's fun. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was at a wedding, but we did have cameras there and it looked amazing. And nice. I know she had a blast. So I'm excited nice. to, to at least cut the episode. <laughs> yeah. When do you think that will be released? So it's going to be released um, in the beginning of June. We're gonna we're gonna send it out as a as a binge situation. So we're gonna nice. package it all up. All the episodes will release in the beginning of June, and um, hopefully we get some PR around it so we can build up the hype for it, and everyone will enjoy it then. But yeah, let's go. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Is she is she gonna play college basketball? She's 
as you, as you said, she's multi-talented, so she can go in a bunch of different directions as her next, next step. Is she going to seek to play college ball? Yes, she is committed to LSU. So nice. we'll be down there in the bayou with Kim Mulkey. Um, Mm. And I think she'll be really, really good down there. So I'm excited to see like this next level for her. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, we have someone to follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's always oh, nice please. to know these Flage folks. Johnson. I think she's at Flage on Instagram. What okay. I she's like so she's hilarious to me. So definitely follow her if you can, because she's okay. Here. okay. Well, Pete, you said something a little earlier that kind of stuck with me about how when you were at ESPN, sometimes like you would have to bring your own equipment and like do your own stuff. And um, yeah. not trying to like bring that back at all. Oh just, no, 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 you're good. <laughs> just it's just like that. Yeah, it just kind of like reminded me of <clears throat> because now that you're you've done um done work as a director, I'm just kind of wondering, kind of from a I'm not sure if identity standpoint, but like for me personally, I I I feel like we're similar in a way where I really like the idea of directing and having some sort of influence on the look and feel of of certain content. That's one of the reasons why I started the podcast is that. I have total control over how this sounds, how the design looks, all this and that. Yeah. But for me personally, it's it's difficult to uh, to outsource at times. I'm I'm someone who like yeah. I can take a photo but like I'm not a photographer. I can edit on iMovie and very basically on Premiere Pro but like I'm not a video editor. So like I can do basic functions but not like super complex stuff. So like how have you kind of navigated producing content at an extremely elite level while managing like delegating work but also you mentioned like you can do stuff yourself like you're very capable of doing of shooting and editing so how do you kind of find the dynamic the right balance between uh delegating and knowing what you're capable of doing yourself especially like in a director role too now Yeah, I think it's training me to be a better communicator because when you are able to do things yourself, you don't ever have to tell somebody else how to do it. So I like a certain look or if I like like certain things or certain way things are edited, um, I never really had to practice communicating that to somebody. And a lot of my closest friends know like my mind goes 10,000 miles a minute and half the time I don't even make sense (laughs) when I'm trying (laughs) to explain an idea. But like the people who know me know me and so they understand where I'm going in that direction. But it is something that I'm actually like really trying to work on is my communication and telling people exactly what I'm thinking and articulating in a way that they can understand it. Um, also like letting people do what they do, you know, I Mm -hmm. hire certain people to do certain jobs. So if I hire a DP, I want them to have the freedom to DP. I don't want to be like looking over their shoulder or like micromanaging and doing all this like unnecessary, Mm -hmm. annoying stuff. Um, but like really just letting them work. So down from you know the editor to the assistant camera to the dp i always tell my crews like hey if you guys have an idea um or if we're in an interview and you guys have a question when we're done with the interview and you thought of something like ask it like i i want people to feel involved in the creative process every step of the way and so um i think like building that creative environment too kind of helps with that balance a little bit because everybody feels like they have a piece of the creative and like what's interesting actually that actually happened um with i am jalea our assistant camera deanna um we were finished with the the interview with Jalea and at the very end, I was like, hey, does anybody like have anything else they wanna ask before you let her go? And Deanna asked you a great question and it opened the whole series. Nice. So um, if we didn't do that, then we wouldn't have had that that great sound bite, but um, you know, definitely like letting people do what they wanna do, like what I hired them to do and yeah. let them cook. Cause I don't yeah. wanna, I don't wanna get anybody with anybody's way. You hear that, Max? Let me cook. Uh, okay, let others, you know, Uh-oh. do the cooking. Okay. 
Do you want to? You want to edit this? He, you can edit this episode. Do you want to promote it? He puts a, a very strict limit, Kayla, on the number of. Que- uh, I have a very strict limit on the number of questions I could ask. I'm so trying. Not letting me cook. I I let you cook in the interview, and then after that, you're out the kitchen because <laughs> you're not the best chef after the interview. Sorry. <laughs> no, chef. that is. I mean, I think uh, I think you said that really well, and I think. You're right. Communication is is super important in that, and that's something that I'm I'm working on. Uh, a while ago, a few months ago, I announced, in, I think in the Kelly episode, that I hired an intern, and that was actually the the younger sister of my girlfriend. And you know, it was virtual, so that's that's a barrier, and it was just it was just tough to to, to get stuff done, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. you know, I'm still hopeful that we'll be able to be more productive in the future, but it's, it's tough to try and get what's in your head out verbally and have someone else execute those ideas, you know? And uh, yeah. actually after this, I'm supposed to have another call with someone who we're hopefully going to be exporting, not exporting, outsourcing our ability to make uh, promo videos for, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Yeah. So I'm not up all hours of the night doing all this <laughs> editing edit stuff because I'm a one man show over here. Um, after, after I know how that is after the production. Uh, I've never pretended to be anything other than the pretty face of this <laughs> podcast. So <laughs> I, I'm you know, the host, and that is it. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think I think you uh, you're spot on with that. And I mean, shit. If you were if you were my director, I think. I would feel very empowered to like, you know, cook. I'd be empowered uh, to cook. Yeah. Everyone you know? do their thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it also it just like makes for a better better product too. If you just like put people in boxes. And this is what I have learned from places that I have not loved working at I'll say that yeah. um it's like what not to do and I I couldn't stand when people put me in boxes so I don't want to yeah. do that to anybody if I'm you know leading a project so if somebody is an editor but they have skills with directing or being on cam or whatever it is like I want them to be able to expand into those roles rather than just like no you're just doing this and that's it because you just never know what that that person has to offer exactly yeah Um, so we've talked about two of the projects you've worked on at together what what else what other stuff is together doing what other types of projects what are we not doing okay Um, what do you okay that's the better question (laughs) We have we have so much going on. Um, our social media is like booming. Paula leads that, and she is just incredible. Um, we have I'm gonna probably get this wrong, but one of the fastest growing sports TikToks I think since launch we have close to two million followers now on TikTok. It's crazy, yeah. all organic. And I, I know a lot of those people buy their followers, but everything is organic from our side. Um. So we have like a lot of social content um, going on there. We're actually, they actually want us to do a daily show, which is hilarious. So it'll be myself, Paula. Um, I don't know if you guys know Justine Brown, but she's new to the team. And then our graphics um, lead, Haley. So so that's going to be an everyday everyday it's gonna be it's it's called the daily show but we're gonna do it weekly so we started doing it a couple months ago or like late last year and just like threw it out there to see if people liked it and it was just so chaotic and a hot mess and people are like we want it back so we're gonna try to bring (laughs) bring that back which is hilarious is it kind of like a weekly a weekly roundup of yeah uh, the, yeah it's it's very unique just to anything that you've stuff. seen yeah it's it's very unique to like a normal daily show because a lot of times people just like this is what happened in the news and we're yeah. not doing that where it's more of a spoof um yeah. daily show so that's the nugget i'll give y'all but it's supposed to nice. meant to be funny and like really chill and dumb to be honest just you know a little break from your work day to watch and consume but yeah we're doing that we have a lot of long form documentaries coming out um we also have merch so oh, merch we're gonna have to we're gonna have to support 
Yeah. yeah, we have merch. Um, we have a lot of brand partnerships. Like we're doing um in real life events. We just actually did um a, an event at March Madness, um, the final four actually, uh, where Buick um hosted what we call huddles. We had Suber Subert and Ari McDonald um from Arizona. Yeah they did a round table talk in front of our audience and that was like really cool so we're like there's hands in everything yeah. we're doing a lot uh and like i said we have a small but mighty team so we're just like looking to continue to grow that's awesome do you know the um the origin of the name together you know you may not but it's a cool i think it's kind of a cool name i just don't know you know how what what it mean i know what it means but what it symbolizes yeah no that's definitely a question for jess because they are the ones that so it was jess haley emily johnson and paula hughes um they were the ogs of this company and they really just like ideated conceptualized the brand and the look and um, I'm so mad that I didn't refresh the story, but Jess has like the whole story backdrop of how she came up with together. She came up with the name and the look of it. So I'll definitely have to put you guys in context so you can have her on because she would yeah. be great. Yeah, that would be that'd be a good plug. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we've we've had you for a while now. I feel like we have a good idea of what has been going on in the last year and yeah. what kind of to look forward to, which is a lot. I don't know if do we want to do a eating, reading, preaching plug-in segment? Or I mean we've already kind of we've kind of kind of done that. <laughs> I uh, would like okay. but yeah. maybe maybe a plug. A plug. Well, yeah, I did you uh you watch women's March Madness? Were you uh, thinking about a uh, upset of UConn? Uh, by uh, the mighty central Florida. I definitely. Okay. So because he's looking at your Twitter. Is that, I love it. Yeah. I love it because I man, follow Kayla's life very man, closely. This man might be more active on Twitter than you. <laughs> I love it. See, I'm very active. I to, do I follow you? I feel like I do. I don't know if you want that. I don't, you don't I want, that. want that. I'm very political on Twitter. <laughs> so. <just> like, please. <laughs> please, look, yeah. please don't. Um, I definitely will, yeah. but you, listen, UCF women's basketball, we went to a few games, um, to support them, you know, we're here, uh, locally. And so we have great ties to their women's program and to their men's program. And, um, you know, we were invited to a couple games and like, of course you want to go support the people that are in your circle. And they're like, yeah, we'll go to a game. We pulled up and we're like, oh my gosh, this team is amazing. Every game we went to, they were just killing people in like big schools. So we're like, oh shoot, like they're good. The real deal. Yep. Yeah, they're real. They had a squad. Okay. So when they were going through the tournament and they're beating people, I was like, they can beat UConn. If you look at the matchup and they should have won that game, if they would have made their free throws, I think I wrote that. Free throws. If they would have made their free, free throws, throws, it would have been a done you. deal. I don't know how they would have moved on, but like they could have really upset, but uh, the tournament was great. And I'm glad um, that South Carolina won, Yeah. but UCF, I was like, oh, they're that team. They're going to be really good in the next, you know, few years coming up. And, and as someone pointed out to me, whether it was Max or Madison, but the ratings for the NC2A final uh, games, the women's final had a much higher rating than the men's final. Oh wow! I didn't which even is know a that. big, which, that's a big deal. Yeah. It is that's a big deal. deal. I have that's another question for you, Kayla. Yeah. I know you have ties to the Washington football okay. team. Yeah. Professional, right? Your dad played for them. He did. Game. Won a Super right. Bowl. The last yeah. Super Bowl <laughs> he was on that team. That yeah, was the so, last Super Bowl they won. I, so I guess two questions for you. A, have you ever seen your dad's Super Bowl ring? And question number two is, <laughs> well, maybe he keeps it in a safe, in a vault. I don't know. You guys, he got it stolen one time. There you go. That's crazy. Did he get it back? Now, you'll you'll have to have him on to tell you that story. because that, that sounds damn. like a, He got That's it back. Wild. Okay, so second question is, how how are you on the commander's name? I mean, because I know 
there was a whole survey put out um, and yeah. as to the new name it's you're not you're not feeling it not, i just like i don't know i just i'd rather do washington football team at this, this point owner, ownership of that team is just i feel like at this point just like <sighs> whatever they're just taking they're just taking the piss like i just, just i kind of I'm like, do I need to adopt a new team? Because it's just, it's not giving. So yeah, it's tough. It's not a great I'm name. Loyal person. I'm yeah. loyal to the end, but it's, it's tough when you're loyal and the and the teams that you're loyal to, like, yeah, it's like, do you not see this loyalty? Like, come on, it's it feels like it's a one way street sometimes, especially yeah. like, I mean, shit in Oakland, it's like three of our teams are about to be gone, so it's like what's the point right. of being loyal if you're even gonna leave the city like jesus um that's another that's another another episode yeah it's another episode okay kayla this was amazing i love this we love we love talking to you we do. and we know this is not gonna be the last time that we talk with you um it's awesome to see you thriving at this new company in this new role and we're excited to see you continue to thrive, continue to put out amazing and much needed content because what you're doing is so important uh, be because like you said, these are really important stories that need to be told and you are on the front line of shifting and changing the culture right now. So thank you for what you're doing and you have our support. We can't wait to see what's next. Thank you guys so much for having me. I feel like it's just like a family reunion every time we talk. So yeah, I feel like a podcast. But... Well, last time you were on, Max, I think at the end said you're you're now family. Yeah. And so I'm uh, you're you're they family. Stuck with me. Yeah. Not going for the first time ever in marathon minute history to be the third. <laughs> hey, repeat guest. Right now you're you're front runner for being I'm third. Front runner. That's Hall of Fame stuff, awesome. Kayla. Really uh, let me let me also thank you, Kayla, for your time. You're very generous with it with the first time and, and this time. And as, as Max said, the work you're doing is is both uh, exciting and important. And uh, I'm going to watch your film when it comes out. Atlanta yeah. Film Festival. Yeah. Can you send us uh, yeah, one of the, the one of the, the links? Or... Link. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Does does together have any men's merch? Oh, we have dad hats and all the all the things. We have oh. sweatshirts, sweatsuits. I, I sent like, man, when we came out, I sent it to all my guy friends. Nice. <laughs> okay. I like, Wear this. <laughs> Thank I'll check you. it out. I'm gonna Maybe check we it can out. Work out some sort of marathon minute season two drop exchange Listen. for you know because we got we got some stuff on the way. We got yeah. And that, not, that can work out. We can, okay. we can, we're, we're here. We're here. We're here. Okay. Yeah. We're on, we're on the same page. All Appreciate right. You, Thanks. Bye. Appreciate Have a great you. weekend. You too. Happy Easter. Hey. You too.